How much can a nation accomplish in 30 years? That's something we'll discuss in this edition of SC21 TV. Hello, hello, Cami. Will you please introduce yourself and tell us about your organization? Sure, Rich. My name is Cami Roberts, and I'm the director of the National Coordination Office for the Networking and Information Technology Research and Development Program in the U.S. federal government. We are an organization that helps coordinate federal IT R&D across the entire U.S. government. Lots wow. of lots of efforts going on there. <laughs> that that's a that's a big chunk, and you are chairing. <laughs> a uh, thing called a birds of a feather or a BOF gathering at the SC21 conference. And you're looking at a very significant 30 year anniversary. What is that anniversary and why is it significant? So December 9th, 2021 marks the 30th anniversary of the signing of the High Performance Computing or HPC Act of 1991, which provided for increased federal investment in HPC and coordinated federal program to ensure continued U.S. leadership in high performance computing. The act came about um, through the actions of then Senator Al Gore and others, because at the time, global competition in IT and HPC was very high. And that's something we're facing again today. At the same time, the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy um, published their report, Grand Challenges, High Performance Computing and Communication, which outlined a development strategy for HPC and provided a framework for coordinated high performance computing program in the government. The increased federal commitment to information technology R&D continues to be reflected. As in 1991, when the act was signed, the U.S. government was spending about $5 million in IT R&D, and we reported $6.5 billion in 2021. Wow. So why, why is looking back important to understanding where we are now and where we're headed in the future? So looking back is an important context for understanding the future. You see it in the writings of Venevier Bush, particularly in his science, The Endless Frontier, his 1945 report to the President of the United States, where he called for an expansion of government support for science. Understanding where we started and how we got to today provides lessons that can maximize the benefits of science and technology and speed the resolution of society issues. So what policies worked and which didn't? What technologies changed the world and which didn't? Which programs excelled? And what was the secret sauce that led to that success? Every data point from the past provides insights that drive faster innovation. This is really why it's important to commemorate the HPC Act anniversary at SC21. Some of those attending have been working at HPC even before the act was signed. Some started that same year and some are just starting now. But many have been able to take advantage of the increase in federal investments to create HPC innovations we take for granted today and consider weather modeling, windshield design, movie special effects, and finding new treatments for rare or common diseases, including AIDS, cancer, and of course, COVID-19. HPC is critical to scientific excellence and innovation. The diverse participants at SC21 each bring a different viewpoint, which they can learn from the struggles of current and former researchers to find new paths, new systems, new data insights, new applications, and keep HPC innovation thriving. I'm so glad you mentioned entertainment because that is something that ties into this SC21 theme that it's science and beyond. When you are watching a movie of special effects, you're seeing some of the uh, things that were made possible only by high performance computing. Uh, I, when you mentioned secret sauce, I thought NITRD has got to be part of that secret sauce. Tell us what NITRD is and why national coordination is a priority and possibly why it is part of the secret sauce. So as I mentioned earlier, one of the key parts of the HPC Act was to establish a mechanism to lead the coordination of HPC R&D across the federal government that has evolved into the networking and information technology research and development program that I help lead today, or NIDRD. We're a multi-agency program, provides opportunity for federal agencies to work together to coordinate and collaborate to tackle their multidisciplinary and multi-sector R&D problems. 
We're the primary source of federally funded R&D and advanced information technologies. And we ensure that there's not duplication of effort within the government, which is, of course, part of that secret sauce that you mentioned. We bring the best and the brightest together. NIDRD is managed by a subcommittee, which um, started in 1991 with the Act, with 11 members. And we now have 25 member agencies and over 60 other participating agencies. Just huge. That's amazing. So tell us what are some of the most uh, satisfying aspects of your work, Cami? Oh, I'm not sure where to start with that. <laughs> um, so I think the opportunity to see the inner workings of federal R&D enterprise just fascinates me. To see science and technology policy being informed by the results of R&D and to see the federal R&D agencies thriving because of their scientific integrity, commitment to excellence, and their perseverance. I'm also inspired by the dedication and enthusiasm by, of the federal scientists, engineers, and program managers. Each and every one of them works diligently to make the best use of the federal investments, to strive for innovations that will make our country and our world a better place. And finally, I, my example I often use is when I sit in a meeting and two agencies make a connection that wasn't there before, so very satisfying. It means we are discussing our mission, we are meeting our mission. Even better when that connection leads to a joint program, such as the National AI Institutes with the National Science Foundation and the U.S. Department of Agriculture, or the Resilient and Intelligent Next Generation Systems Program, which is bringing together the National Science Foundation, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, and the Department of Defense, partnering with the private sector to accelerate research and next generation networking and computing systems. These are the things that, you know, I, I love to get up every morning and, and start my job with these things ahead of me. And this kind of connecting is also something that happens at SC21. People who may have uh, not known each other, or maybe they only uh, corresponded with each other via email, they're getting to see each other face to face and make those connections. And, and some real magic happens when that happens. Agreed. This year, SC21 is emphasizing uh, as it has for many recent years, diversity and inclusivity. And I'd like to hear from you how you think that R&D benefits when we have the inclusion of women and people of color, color and other uh, individuals involved. Sure. So the importance of diversity and inclusivity cannot be underestimated. For too long, we have underutilized the talents of all Americans. Um, Dr. Talitha Washington of the Clark Atlanta University will be joining our BOF panel as we address just this question. We all saw the film Hidden Figures and the critical support women provided for the space program. And we finally recognized their contributions. And this is the time to start encouraging others to participate in any STEM field. Some of the benefits are we bring in novel perspectives on hard problems that will bring higher levels of innovation and productivity. We can increase the overall talent pool because the demand for S&T workers right now is outpacing degree production. There's amplification of inclusion into more communities and into future generations, driving creativity in today's and tomorrow's workforce. We will advance the fundamental American value of fairness along with the key component of the administration's commitment to ethics and integrity in our pursuit of R&D. These are all core priorities with, under President Biden, and he has several programs in place, including roundtables, where called the Time Is Now, where he's listening to the communities to try and find solutions to these problems and to get more STEM talent out there. Well, Cami Roberts, it's been a delight to talk with you. Thanks so much for being with us on SC21 TV. Thank you, Rich. Appreciate the time.